Committee will come to order. We do apologize for running a little bit behind. As you know well, that we have some votes being called, and we will, I am very confident, have to be able to take a short recess here in a moment. I do some other votes. Let me do a quick statement here. The Oversight Committee mission statement. Uh, this is a regulatory barriers to Indian American job creation, so I want to be able to read this statement quickly. We exist to secure two fundamental principles. First, Americans have a right to know that the money Washington takes from them is well spent. And second, Americans deserve an efficient, effective government that works for them. Our duty on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee is to protect these rights. Our solemn responsibility is to hold government accountable to taxpayers because taxpayers have a right to know what they get from their government. We will work tirelessly in partnership with citizen watchdogs to deliver the facts to the American people and bring genuine reform to the Federal bureaucracy. This is the mission of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Let me make a quick opening statement and just to be able to set up what we are trying to accomplish today. The relationship between American Indians and the Federal Government is a relationship that is entirely unique in America. For over a century, Federal programs have worked hand-in-hand -hand with tribal leaders to encourage economic development among Native American populations. A principal part of this hearing is to listen and to learn how and why unemployment remains high in Native American populations and how the Federal Government affects economic development among the tribes. The Bureau of Indian Affairs has promulgated regulations and established programs that oversee lands, criminal justice, education, infrastructure specifically pertaining to tribal groups. Yet, tribal groups continue to struggle to grow their economies, provide jobs for their members, and have access to the fundamental building blocks of a prosperous society. According to the most recent available data, the national unemployment rate for Indians was as high as 15.2 percent. On some reservations, unemployment rates reach as high as 50 percent. There is bipartisan agreement on the many failures at BIA. Information was retrieved from the GAO and OIG in, in addition to tribal interviews and on BIA could better serve American Indians. The Department of the Interior Office of Inspector General has written numerous reports about widespread systemic failures at the BIA and the Bureau of Indian Education, two of the bureaus within the uh, Department of Interior responsible for administering programs designed to provide essential services to American Indians. OIG investigators and auditors found disturbingly poor conditions in Indian schools prepared by the Bureau of, of Indian Education. Students attend classes sometimes in condemned buildings that lack proper electrical and heating systems, no fire detection systems, no running water, and in some cases buildings crumble around children as they attend class. Officer Inspector General also found that school violence was rampant and students and staff are risking their safety and sometimes their lives attending some of these schools. These conditions are clearly not conducive to learning. The Bureau of Indian Affairs has been accused of mismanaging taxpayer money by spending tens of millions of dollars on failed programs such as bungle conversion of the narrowband radio technology. The BIA fee-to-trust program can hamstring access to economic development by regulations and a process that hinders land leasing for natural resources. Tribes are often at the mercy of the Federal Government's leasing decisions and have little recourse for injecting their own opinions for self-determination in these processes. In other instances, private entities often pass up investment opportunity on Indian land because of a complicated 49-step process, which includes NEPA analysis required for development on Federal trust land. Investment on tribal land is also impeded by fractionalization a process begun almost 150 years ago by the General Allotment Act of 1887. Land parcels given to tribal members are owned in fractional portions by thousands of heirs. Both of these land management practices can present barriers to the development of resources on Native American lands. Given these problems, it is disturbing that BIA has a long history of non-responsiveness to the Office of Inspector General and other oversight entities and routinely ignores these reports and recommendations while continuing to fall short on delivering the basic services to 1.9 American, uh, million American Indians. This hearing is not designed with predetermined outcomes. We are listening and we are looking for input. We look forward to your testimony today and we thank you very much for attending and contributing your time. As Chair, I now recognize the distinguished ranking member, Mr. Connolly, for his opening statement. I thank the Chairman and I thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding these hearings. Uh, given the fact that we are already voting, I am just going to summarize a couple of high points in my testimony and without objection would ask the full statement be entered into the record. Absolutely. Without objection. I thank the Chair. Um, I think the Chair has outlined some of the problems uh, in the uh, Native American community and especially in management issues with BIA, uh, from education to waste, fraud and abuse in the programs. On the other hand, I would hope that we would broaden our consideration to also look at the disinvestment in the Native American community that is occurring in this Congress. If you look at H.R. 1, the continuing resolution that was passed on a party line vote um, a month or and a half ago, um, that, uh, that cut 
Native American housing block grants by $200 million. It reduced rural utility service by 24 percent and eliminated entirely the Native American youth program. I believe that those cuts are uh, going to have uh, serious impacts uh, in uh, the Native American community throughout the United States. Uh, and so I am going to be interested in, in hearing testimony about what are those impacts and what other kinds of things do we need to avoid. Um, I noticed, for example, that an awful lot of Native American communities uh, strongly urged us, especially Western fishing groups, uh, Chairman Allen, are urging us not to pass H.R. 872, deregulating pesticides under the Clean Water Act. Uh, and yet, of course, we are bound to do that. That is going to happen, unfortunately. Um, I believe that we also ought to be looking at uh, exploring opportunities for further collaboration between the Federal Government and Native American communities. Uh, clearly, the BIA could do more in promoting tourism. Uh, clearly, the BIA and other, asp uh, other elements of the Federal Government could be collaborating with a lot of Native American communities uh, on renewable energy resources, wind power, solar power, uh, and could actually uh, take advantage of a natural resource we all share especially in many of those communities. So I am going to be very interested in talking about job creation and in uh, taking advantage of some resources and opportunities that exist in the community and where perhaps some of the decisions already made in this Congress have perhaps unintentionally but nonetheless had a deleterious effect on the community. Thank you so much and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, you are very welcome. Members will have seven days to submit opening statements. Any other materials uh, for the record and other witnesses may submit uh, items for the record uh, to be able to be included within the next seven days. Uh, we are going to take a short recess, and when we come back, I want to be able to introduce our guests that are here and swear you in and then begin the process for this. Uh, we will have other members that will join us at that time. We expect about four votes. Uh, which that would mean probably around 40 minutes or so. Uh, so if you need to be able to slip away and then be able to come back, you will have time to be able to accomplish that. And then our staff will be here and they will be able to keep you up to date with what is happening uh, during the voting process. Thank you for being here and we will stand in recess.